popping the valve covers and the oil pan off this engine just to verify you know there's no crazy gunk in there we'll play with the rod bearings and make sure that sounds funny make sure that uh there's no crazy weird loose tolerances anywhere anything like that nothing's broken um that way we know that it's good to go and we can start ordering parts for it we're also going to test fit the swap kit oil pan and i've got a really special part unboxing for you guys it's pretty much a game changer for this swap uh that i'll show you once we get this done and taken care of. I think these are eights, not tens. Yep, they are eights. I will just use our quarter inch gun. This is kind of the moment of truth, guys. because it's a sweater. Um, but for those of you who live in cold areas, or those of you who live in Florida and need this once a year, uh, they're for sale on the website, taylorgifts.com. There's a bunch of watery oil coming out of one of these cylinders, but that's more than likely from when I pressure washed this thing, the rags got a little soaked and pushed some water up into everything. Let's see. All right, let me show you guys what this looks like. definitely varnished, but I mean, it, it looks fine. There's nothing noticeably wrong here. No bits of metal, no broken pieces, nothing like that. Same goes with the other side. This side's a little bit darker than the uh, passenger side there, or, well, I guess that would be driver's side. No, passenger side. I never know these things. But you notice how this one has like a really dark film on? Is that just the lighting? 
No, that's just the way it is. It's just really dark. But again, no, no weird metal deposits or anything like that. Oh, sorry, put you guys over. So now we'll flip it over, pull the oil pan off. Oh, just let that drain for a second. Why did it just lose up? Okay. All right, these are also these are tens for sure, right? Tens, yeah, tens. They're gonna organize these by themselves. A little handy dandy tray here. God, these are all messy, so. Hands. Ah! Alright, we're putting gloves on now because this oil pan is disgusting. I think I got all the bolts. I guess we'll find out. Unless there's a bolt back here. No, it's just these two. I wonder if this is like Miata oil pans where you gotta like pry it off. Well, it shouldn't be because it's not RTV. Let's see if there's a bolt back here. That I just can't see because all this gunk. Uh, I don't think so. That looks like a bolt. I feel like that's a bolt. There's not one over here. Ah, oh, it was a bolt. Oh my god. It was covered under so much gunk. It didn't even look like a bolt. Okay. Now we should be able to pop this puppy off. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Solid. Let's see. Good. We'll go ahead and pop this uh, pickup tube off and this one ditch tray. That'll give us a better look at what we're what we're torquing with here. There. Pick up two first. Oh, pop the O-ring off. I'm missing something here. Oh, I missed this front one. It's important. I mean, you take stuff off, you take all the bolts off. Not just some of them, all of them. All of the bolts is important. Okay. All right, let's put this down here. Let's get a flashlight so we can really look in here, see what we're working with. see a lot just by popping a oil pan off most stuff. I don't see any broken pistons so far. Cam, lifters, see if we can see anything wrong with those. Don't see anything crazy so far. Lifters all look decent. It's kind of hard to see all of them but I can see most of them. I should be able to see more when I turn the motor over. I can see like each side. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely dirty, but I don't see anything majorly wrong with it. Let's, we're gonna flip it back over and kind of like let this oil that's in the top of the pistons and stuff drain out into this pan. Uh, and then we'll do other stuff. I don't know what that stuff entails, but other stuff. By yourself, getting it flipped back up, right? Okay. Dude, that pan is 
was worth every penny. It was like 30 bucks on Jags. Something that you might not think to do when buying a used motor like this is just kind of check everything. So right now I'm checking to make sure that the threads uh, for the flywheel all look good and they're not like none of them are stripped out or anything because I would hate to get this motor all together and then have to put another crank in it because these are stripped if I can't get them tapped and whatnot. So I'm just checking little things like that before we start going crazy with it because I would hate to have to deal with some annoying issue down the road after we've got most of it together. We do have a couple of broken exhaust studs. Well, they're actually bolts on this motor. Uh, I don't remember where they are. Well, uh, I'll show you guys either in this video or another video how to get them out uh, with TIG welding. Basically just build it up and then use, like set it up to where you can get vice grips on it. Uh, these, the ones I got out, uh, there was a couple stripped ones that were broken off part way out so I could already get vice grips on them and they came out easy so it shouldn't be very tough on this thing. All right, so I need to run to the store to get, let's see, brake cleaner and some paint for the valve covers, which I'm not gonna give away what color yet, but it's pretty common, but I, I love it. I love valve covers done this way. And we're back. Boy, did that turn into, we're gonna shut this garage door. Boy, did that turn into quite the mission. Um, I was looking for this wrinkle red spray paint. Basically you paint it on and then you hit it with a heat gun and it wrinkles up. It gives you like the OEM Honda valve cover finish. Um, but like nowhere carries this. I swore everywhere used to have it. I had to go like across town to an O'Reilly's to pick it up. I went to Advance to get brake clean because I thought they might have it. Uh, it's just been a, a while of back and forth, but we're back on the project. So we're gonna go ahead and paint these valve covers. I guess that's the first step. Um, no, you know, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know what I'm doing. I just started filming and then realized that I needed to come up with a plan. So I think, I think what I'll do is I'll take these valve covers off and then we'll flip this motor back over. I will clean the like innards of this thing. I need to take some pictures to send to my friend Derek so we can make sure, well not make sure this is a Gen 3 motor, but tell me if I have Gen 4 rods or not. Um, and I want to send him pictures of the rest of this just to make sure, you know, he's opened a lot of these and he'll know if it looks okay. So while that's like cleaning and drying and degunkifying, uh, we'll paint these with the thing. I also got wrinkle black. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna paint wrinkle black, but I'm sure I'll find something to paint wrinkle black because wrinkle anything looks sick. I mean, oh God, who doesn't like wrinkle? Finished. Oh, squeak, squeak. Okay. This one gets sketchy when it passes by. Oh God, that center point every time. Oh, it's got a little bit of drag this time. I was looking at this and thought it was welded terribly and only had like two spot welds out here on the outside. But then I looked inside and it's welded all the way around and I'm just an idiot. Okay, great. God, this, I mean, this thing's not that bad. It's just like, I don't know how to explain it. Junk off and out of here. All the loose debris. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to wire wheel this. Everyone's gonna tell me I shouldn't do that because I'm gonna scratch the aluminum surface and destroy it. I'll try, you know what? For you guys, I'll try to raise your weight first. We'll do this the semi-proper way if I can find a razor blade. Oh, this is working pretty well, honestly. All right, I didn't bother making you guys endure 15 minutes of me scraping gasket with a razor blade. I went with the 75-25 uh, rule that I made up on this. Basically, it's the same thing I did with the outside of the motor. And it's that 25% of the work and time will get you about 75% of the way there. So we're about 75% of the way there. It took us about 15 minutes. I could spend another 45 minutes chipping off every tiny piece with this razor blade to make it 100%, but to me it's not worth three times the amount of time to get it just a little bit better. 
That's what I tell myself at least anyway. At this point, it's not gonna make much difference if the little tiny bit of residual leftover is not gonna be what causes me to have an oil pan gasket failure. So I'm not too worried about it. But yeah, same thing with the motor. I spent 30 minutes in the garage cleaning this while I was hanging out with my roommates and there's still dirty spots, but I'm not gonna spend another hour and a half, two hours just to get it perfect. It's gonna get dirty anyway. It's an engine, it's gonna be in a drift car. It doesn't matter. All right, I've got this thing rotated at like 45 degrees. I've noticed that there's like some hard spots as I crank this thing around. Like, let's see, we're stuck on one there. But it kind of clears through them. So what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna pour some marble mystery oil down in the cylinders, but it's fit to the other side, spin it over, see if that helps. God, like what are they doing? It's like 9.30 in the morning. What are they cutting? They've been doing this for like weeks. I don't, I don't understand. We're building a house. Using the dirty funnel. One cylinder. Because it was sitting outside, um, without a, a throttle body on it. Maybe it got a little bit of corrosion on the cylinders that we can just clean up um, with some marble mister oil. And if it spins smoothly, once it runs, it should clear itself up, but we'll know in a minute. <laughs> Rotates freely. I mean, okay, we have the spark plugs out, so it should, shouldn't have any issues spinning freely, but it doesn't seem to be hanging up on anything anymore. Let's see if we can get it to if we go slow. Around here is where it should do it. I mean, there's a couple of little stiffer spots, but I think it's, yeah, it's like right there, but it, it, it goes right through. Now the real question is, do we pull the heads off or not? Man, I'm in between. I really don't want to mess with it to that extent. I just want to throw a can of valve springs in it and not take the heads off or anything. I just don't want to open that can of worms or go down that snowball effect tunnel either. And I mean, at this stage of the build, I don't want to get super hung up on making sure this thing's dialed when in reality, I could probably throw it in and it would work just fine. So I think for now, we're going to leave it. We're going to focus on everything else we have to do. Um, and then if I'm still unsure, we'll come back. We'll pop the heads off whenever we do the cam. Seems like a good plan to me. What do you guys think? I don't know. If you have any experience with this, uh, let me know in the comments below. So we're gonna move on to the valve covers while we're letting this thing sit here and be ugly, I guess, I don't know. All right, I've got these valve covers relatively clean. Again, the theme of this build is gonna be the 75-25 thing I talked about earlier, and just don't get lost in the build. Like, that's the reason I'm not gonna go too crazy with worrying about this motor hanging up while it's spinning over, unless I find a good reason to, because I'm gonna be a lot more motivated to fix it once it's in the car and everything's done than I am now when I haven't even started the process. And I see a lot of people get stuck with, oh, well, these aren't the best heads I should get and maybe I should wait and try to find a set of these heads and oh, I, you know, I have this cam, but I'm gonna try to get this cam and, and they end up never even building the car or never putting the motor in the car because we spend so much time trying to figure out what's gonna be the best. Like the, the best is your car running. So that's gonna be the goal for this build. Just wanted to get that off my chest here. So these are clean-ish. Uh, we're gonna do the wrinkle red thing. I bought this Harbor Freight heat gun, um, which is like their more expensive 12 setting version that I didn't wanna buy, because I you normally heat this stuff up, but it says on here that it does it on its own. Um, I don't know if that's a new thing or if just heating it up works better. So we're gonna, we're gonna try to heat it up like I've always done every time I've done this. Professional. I should probably remove this grommet though, that's for sure, for me. They're wrinkling up nicely. We're gonna go over them with the heat gun real quick just to kind of expedite the process here. I guess I should turn this bitch on high. While I was letting those dry, the FedEx guy showed up and brought me a very exciting package. All right, I'm opening this upside down so that you guys can't see my address because I'm awful about always putting my address in videos. So this, what's in this box, I've hinted at it multiple times. 
told you guys that there's a secret mod I'm doing to the Miata now while we do this LS swap. I hadn't told you guys what it was yet, and now you guys get to find out. For those of you that care, I'm sorry some of you are like, just put your LS in already. You don't care about all this other drift stuff. Any guesses before I open it up? Drift related parts. Any guesses? Ta-da! So we have knuckles. Right, which I already have cut knuckles on my car, right? Well, that's not all. I'm not gonna take all of these out. I'll show this stuff to you guys when we go to put it on. But we've got control arms. This kit is by Zarek Fab. They make like standard cut knuckle Miata stuff, um, like uh, the equivalent to what I have on my car. Just a modified knuckle that you put on your car, gives you a decent angle. But this kit is like the big boy Big baller, I guess I'll take this all out. Big baller angle kit. He did it in this really nice purple for me. I'll open up one of these just so you guys can see the purple. Let me get the rest of this stuff out of the box. So this kit's from Zarek Fabrication. This is their Pro-Am angle kit, which like I said is upper and lower control arms. You got your spherical tie rod in, knuckles, and it comes with brake lines. Those I'm, I'm waiting on, like I said. I'm really excited for this because I've never had a real proper angle kit on a car. I've always had cut knuckles, nothing more than cut knuckles. So to have like a real full angle kit with control arms and everything, most of, I think the most angle I've ever had in a car that I've owned is like 40 to 45 degrees. This should do 60. Um, so I'm pretty hyped about this. It's zero Ackerman, which we'll explain in another video. Um, and it adds a little bit of caster. So we'll get more into this uh, whenever we get to the point of installing it. It's just gonna depend on kind of like the order of operations as far as putting the subframe in with, with or without it on and all of that stuff. But I just wanted to show you guys this because this is like probably the most exciting part for this swap for me because I've never had a car with a real angle kit. So anyway, back to the other stuff. We're gonna test fit the uh, oil pan on now and just see how it all looks. Hooray. All right, so again, I don't even have a gasket for this. I'm also, I plan on doing a High flow oil pump. Oh, this is so nasty now though. Um, cam and valve springs. So I'm just gonna throw this pan on so I don't put the nasty, old, disgusting one back on because there's no point. We're just gonna throw it on with a couple bolts and pretend like we got something done. Make sure that it fits all good and well. I think it comes with like really nice, what looks like stainless hardware. Before my motor made my oil pan look dirty because the oil pan was disgusting because I never cleaned it because there was no point because I wasn't going to use it. And now this oil pan is nice and bright and shiny and clean. Wow, that was a lot of adjectives. <laughs> and it makes my motor look like trash. That's okay. This is all going to get disgusting and filthy anyway. So again, it really doesn't matter. All right, well, that's what the oil pan looks like. I wish these valve covers were dry. Oh, they might be dry enough for me to just set them on there. We're gonna flip it over and set them on there just to see how the whole package deal looks. All right, well, that's what it looks like. They're not really dried yet, so that's not really a good, great representation, but that is what it looks like with the oil pan and valve covers on. All right, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here. There's some things I need to do. We'll see where we end up after we get some advice from some other people. But for now, that is gonna be it for this video. Hopefully next video, we're gonna be either putting in some parts like cam, valve springs, oil pump, or we're gonna be taking this thing further apart. I don't know. Hope for the uh, first one. <laughs> thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. See you guys next time, goodbye.